Hi folks, uh, thanks for joining us for another Wednesday Bible study. And today we're going to work through uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, at least the first 12 verses. So what we'd like you to do is, is go ahead and, and read that on your own, if you haven't already. And then at 7.30 this evening, join our Zoom meeting and we will talk about it. And all the details will be in the description here below this video and I'll have them on the Facebook page and, and uh, if you need them directly, email me. Uh, if, I don't have your, if I have your email, I will send you an invitation when we do this. So go ahead and read 1 Peter 2. And uh, before, just to give you a, a, a little spark, um, I'll tell you what I was drawn to here in the first 12 verses, and it's actually uh, in verse 11. And it is Peter's admonition. He says, I urge you as sojourners and exiles to, to abstain from the passions of the flesh which wage war against your soul to keep your conduct among the Gentiles honorable so that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day of visitation. Uh, I was struck by that phrase, sojourners and exiles, uh, because I think that that's kind of a, a basic human condition, feeling out of place, feeling a... Um, C.S. Lewis talked about it, feeling a, a longing for a world that not only have you never been to, but you don't really know much about it. And uh, that strange feeling of, of homesickness, it doesn't necessarily make sense, uh, rationally speaking. Uh, the funny thing is that very often that feeling of homesickness, we can have it about places we grow up, and sometimes it has nothing to do with the quality of that place. Um, in that way, it's, it's a lot like the longing some people have for, ah, the Christmases of their childhood, which in their memories are, are transformed into an ideal place and time that never actually existed. So why do we feel this way? Why is this vague sense of displacement, this ill-defined longing for another place, an almost universal human experience? Now, the Bible offers this startling answer, but it's a perfectly sensible one, and that is that you really aren't at home. Not, not just yet. You really aren't at home yet. Not the way the world is now. You were made for something else, for something better. It's something that you, you sense more than you know. It's a faint whiff of something. Again, here in 1 Peter 2, just this little passing reference, calls Christians aliens and strangers, that's the NIV, sojourners and exiles, ESV. In other words, you don't exactly belong here. Um, elsewhere, in Philippians, the Apostle Paul says that our citizenship is in heaven. One of the great tragedies of life is that so many people who sense this longing accurately um, don't realize what it is they're longing for. They try to satisfy that sense of displacement by moving from place to place, from job to job, from hobby to hobby, sometimes from marriage to marriage. Um, they hop from, oh, everything. Just trying something constantly new to, 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 to hope, in hope of feeling complete. And all the while, what they're really looking for isn't there in those places. In the fifth century, Augustine, great theologian and church father, he wrote that every human being is born with an emptiness in his or her soul that can only be filled by the living God. Nothing else will do because 
You have made us and drawn us to yourself, he prayed. Our heart is restless until it rests in you, O God. So if you feel displaced, well, you are. It's okay. Join us at 7.30. Hope that we can uh, talk. There's a lot more in chapter 2 here, even if we get past verse 12, which I don't know. But join us. We'll see you then.